Hi everyone, I'm Mark Sir, Product Manager at Saving for College. And on behalf of the whole team here, I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar where we'll learn how to understand and appeal your financial aid awards. Today we're joined by college financing experts, Peg Keough and Joe Messenger of College Aid Pro. And this year, Saving for College and College Aid Pro are partnering to bring you deeper content related to college financing. So we'll be co-hosting seasonal webinars throughout the year. Uh, and also be sure to check out Joe's monthly contribution in our email newsletter. College Aid Pro has also been generous enough to offer you all a 15% discount on their premium technology or a consultation uh, with one of their college planning experts. We'll send more details on signing up for that, as well as a recording of today's presentation uh, following today's webinar. And there will also be an opportunity to share your feedback, which we certainly welcome. So with that, I'll turn it over to Peg and Joe. All right. Uh, hello, everybody. Hi, Peg. Hey, Joe. I see you've got your College Aid Pro shirt on. I do. <laughs> I do. You can't see it very well, but I do have it on. <laughs> on there. Um, yeah, I'm excited to do this presentation. You know, um, we've done this a few times, and uh, every time we do it, I, get, I just get excited about the prospect uh, of, of going through. We're at the finish line now with seniors. I hope we have some parents on that are younger in the process, because as you'll see today, this whole opportunity to appeal for additional financial aid, it really starts with building your college list, um, having schools that potentially will compete. So um, you know, we're going to go through and provide hopefully some, some context around this process. We're going to um, unpack the uh, what I call like the, the mechanics, right? So what type of aid is out there? We're going to go through some samples of award letters, real award letters, and show you that they are extremely confusing. Um, and then we're going to go through some actual kind of live case studies of how we actually successfully appealed for additional financial aid and, and received it um, with some real families. So hopefully that's what you signed up for, uh, because, you know, it's kind of an action-packed hour. We could probably talk about these things for a long time. Um, and you'll get the slides and there's sample language provided in there. Um, we encourage you to use it. Um, as a complement to that, we'll show you our technology. So our technology, there's a free version, completely free to sign up, regardless where you're at in the process. But if you're if you're here and you're a senior parent, um, sign up for the technology. We'll help you compare uh, the awards on a side-by-side -side basis. Um, so, and that's something Peg does consults with families all the time. You know, help make sure you're getting the most free money for college. So hopefully that's why you're here. Um, Peg, I'll turn it over to you to kind of go through and hit the mechanics and provide color if that's cool for you. Sure, I can hop in. I'll just take a few minutes with everybody. Um, and uh, hold on, I clicked off there. Let me, uh, let me do the right thing here. And I'm gonna hop over. Let me just give you a quick visual and I'm just gonna do a really short lesson because we're gonna talk about some stuff and I wanna make sure that everybody is, is on the same page here. So this is our software that Joe was just referencing. It's called MyCap. We created it last year, super excited, super proud of this. It's, it's for you guys, it's for families to help you navigate this process. And as Joe said, there's a free version. So definitely hop in. We're gonna be giving you links to get in there. And then if you wanna book a console or upgrade to the full platform, we're gonna provide a discount as well. So what I wanna point out here just real quick is up here you see three numbers and it says EFC. What that stands for is expected family contribution. So we're going to reference that a little when we're talking about appeal letters, because this is kind of the tip of the iceberg of how all of this works with need-based aid. So when you go in here and onboard yourself into the free version, you're going to see this for your family. You're going to have your three EFCs. And then you'll be able to play around in here, add in more schools. But that's the minimum amount that colleges think you can afford to pay for school. So you really want to have your head around this. So if we have parents in here, and, and feel free to pop in the chat the year that your child's finishing high school, because it's always great for us to see um, what, what years we have here. So I'm sure we have a lot of senior parents. This is a super exciting time for you guys. Your kids are getting into places. This is what you've been doing all this work for. And this will be really relevant for your junior parents. Even if we have some sophomore ones, you guys are just seeing what's coming up. And that is always a good thing in this process. So a lot of people are putting it in the chat, Joe, so you can yep. see what yeah, year. We got, yeah, I got a lot of seniors, but a good mix of, you know, 2021, 2024s, 26s. Okay. A, lot of mul a lot of multiple kids. Um, so we could we could talk on that more. You know, if you've got twins, it looks like. Which uh, I do. So I feel your pain <laughs> and your joy. Uh, yeah. So 
basically just to, I just wanted to give you a heads up. This is, this is your dashboard once you've onboarded and these three numbers are, are this key thing that are going to happen. Cause sometimes when I've done these presentations in the past, you know, people raise their hand, put in the chat, Hey, what's an EFC. So when, when we're talking about that and showing need-based aid that might come in on award letters, that's what it's all revolving around. And that's a whole webinar in and of itself how colleges discount. So stay tuned. The other thing is when you join our, the CAP community through being in the software, we have lots of support and free office hours and webinars and all this great stuff to help you learn um, through the process. Because the whole thing, our, one of our biggest goals is that you guys are informed consumers. Because once you understand financial aid and where you fit, you can go on college tours and ask questions and see through some of the marketing glitz. It's just, and believe me, from being a parent who's gone through this, it relieves a lot of stress and helps you set expectations for your kids, which is huge. So Yeah, and I think that, that idea, right, with the software and a question came in, what's the difference in the EFCs? Well, that's what we really try to unpack. We try to provide full visibility um, and it's free. You know, the limita you're, you're limited to three schools, but like you're going to get that's what the school thinks you can afford. And they use a different formula to, to do that. And it's even school specific. You know, we've got actually several different school specific, like how do you know if a school looks at home equity or not? Well, go to, go to my cap, <laughs> you know, cause some schools do, some schools don't, you know, there's great schools out there, but like the way you shop for college uh, is, is very different than your neighbor. Everybody's a snowflake in the process. So we found that a lot of the tools out there were just not tailored enough. Right, so when you go through this process, we're going to talk specific on this topic of of appealing and getting more aid, and this is exciting. But understand, you know, the best opportunities to get more aid at the end really begin uh, earlier in the process, getting visibility, understanding what the whole process looks like. So that's what we're passionate about. So that's uh, on the screen there, <laughs> uh, the mission, right? So uh, empowering families make more informed consumer decisions because uh, if you don't have the right tools, um, unfortunately, you will get chewed up and spit out. Yeah, knowledge, it sounds cheesy, but knowledge is power. It really is in this. And the colleges are kind of banking on parents not totally understanding, and it's convoluted. And as Joe said, it's it really differs from school to school. Honestly, if it didn't, you wouldn't need us. We wouldn't have a business, right? If it was easy, if it was easy to navigate, right? So okay. All right. Well, I've got the deck here, Joe. So I will uh so there we go. There's Joe and I, we're both, I joined College Aid Pro last year, have known Joe for years. We've talked about partnering and then it just all came together last year. So it was all good. It was, it's been, it's been wonderful. Yeah. So you want me to, you want to go or you want me to Yeah, go? I'll, I'll dive in if you want to navigate and like the, the whole thing, like if you think about colleges, like the colleges are a business. They're, they operate as a not-for-profit. Some of them are for-profit, but most of them not-for-profit colleges, universities, the whole point we're trying to make here is like, if you look at what a college is trying to do, right, there's this big funnel, right? They're trying to get what they call yield to get beds and heads. These are like actual terms used in enrollment management. So their job as a college, right, is to, if you think of it this way, their job is to get the best possible student in and have them pay as much as possible. That's a simple way to think about it. Our job as consumers is to go out and find the best possible college, have them uh, uh, discount us as much as possible and pay as little as possible. So understanding how do we find those schools? How do we get there? Like, just understand this shopping process. You were at the end now, but understand like this is, you know, they have to, they have to package to compete. So think about that. Just keep that in there. These schools have to package to compete. It's an extremely competitive market. Um, and a lot of it's particularly small private schools. They have to compete like crazy. They have to compete with the schools, uh, uh, like uh, the other small privates around them. And they also have to compete with the state school down the street and they have to have value. So again, you know, schools, they're, you know, they're, they're going to try and get you paid as much as possible. Um, so understand like where, what are our opportunities to get the most financial aid? Um, if you're a need-based candidate, we're going to go through that. But if you're, if you're scholarships and you're not a need-based candidate, um, understand, and we'll show you inside the system, your best opportunities are going to be schools where you're in the top 25%. Because make no mistake, these schools are in the business of increasing their profile, increasing their average ACT, increasing their average GPAs. Um, and that's, that's who they're going to incentivize. If you're in the top 25%, that's likely who's going to get incentivized if they offer scholarships, because some schools don't. 
like all of the Ivy League schools. Doesn't matter how smart you are. So if you're on this, uh, we, I did one of these webinars uh, about a week ago, same conversation. Hey, we didn't get any scholarships from Columbia. That's because Columbia does not offer scholarships, nor does Yale, nor does Harvard, nor does MIT. That's all need-based there. So these are the kind of things you know the business, know how they run their business, um, and then you'll get the best uh, college for the best bank for your buck. Yeah. And, and all of this data is in my cap. That's, we developed this so that we would arm you guys with, with we know what you need and we're arming you with it. So you want, yeah. I, you want me to grab this one, Joe? We can talk. Sure. Okay. okay, so basically these financial aid award letters, that's what we're gonna look at in a minute. There's some terminology and you wanna make sure you understand the terminology so that you can try and decipher, decipher these letters. So. You're, there's what we call gift aid. It's the free money. That's what you want to maximize. It's basically money from the college's endowments, right? So grants tend to be the need-based aid because all these schools are discounting, as Joe's talking about. It's just a matter of how they discount. So some schools will really offer wonderful need-based aid, meet 100% of need for every kid on campus. And that revolves around that expected family contribution that we were just talking about. Um, these are called institutional awards, right? That's from the endowment. You can also get grants from the state, local, and, and then federal, which is PAL, right? And there's 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 an FSCOG. There's a there's another there's some other federal stuff as well. But this is the free money that tends to be need based. Most of the time, that's called grants. Then there's scholarships. Most of the time, this is the other kind of discount colleges offer. It's merit based, grades and test scores, talents athletics, but that's a very small percentage. It's mostly, you know, grades and test scores given out by Office of Admissions. So that's what you want to grab the most of, number one and two, right? The others, the work study and the loans, they call this self-help, right? Because it's, it's not free money. You're either working for it or you're going to have to pay it back. You're going to see this on awards. We're going to show you today that this is on awards, right? So work study is your child actually is awarded it goes, interviews, and gets a job. It's not handed to them, right? So good skills to go and interview, find a job, might be a resume building job, but you're working for it. And that money, is it going to be earmarked to pay for books or is it going to be pizza beer money, right? That's the thing you'd have to have a conversation as a family, but that's available. And then loans, we're not going to get in the weeds on all the kinds of loans, but we'll touch on it when we're looking at award letters. But those are the main, main types of aid that you're going to see on these financial aid award letters. Do you want to add anything to that, Joe? Yeah, just, uh, just a little cut, like you said, the free money, um, the, the way that I like to think about it, grants and scholarships, they reduce your cost of college just to hammer that home. They actually reduce the cost of college. Work study and loans are going to be disguised as if they just they cut the cost of college, but they don't, right? So just you got to be careful, and we'll go through these award letters and help you decipher that. But just a high level, grants and scholarships actually reduce your out of pocket costs for college. Um, work study and loans don't, and then um, a smart lending strategy. We'll hit on it a little bit towards the end, but like I can't stress that enough that like you need to understand if you create your budget. And once you have your net cost minus your budget, you're going to know what amount is still left. That's really important and know it for all four years, not just for one. So we'll hit on the kind of the how to pay kind of conversation of like, but student loans, they're, the, they're not all created equal. The $1.7 trillion machine that it is, um, be, be, be cautious because if you want loans and I'll just hit on the parent plus loan, if you want them, they've got them for you. So just because they offer them to you does not mean that you should take them. So I'm just going to quick example. So if we look at this page here, let's say they offer you grants, scholarships, and work study, and even some federal direct loans for the student, and that whole package is $25,000. So you have an unmet cost at a $50,000 school of $25,000. They will literally be on there. If you would like a Parent PLUS loan to solve your problem, click here, and you'll have zero unmet cost. You click here, $25,000. You do that four years in a row, you got $100,000 of Parent PLUS loans, you wake up with a bomb. So just be cautious because they will make them available to you. Just because they offer them does not mean you have to take them. So that's a little soapbox there. <laughs> okay, sorry, I was multitasking, I was answering a question. Yep. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, great, let's, uh, I'm just muting myself on and off just because there's like a course during the webinar, there's a truck outside doing, making some noise, so. Naturally, naturally, that's how, that's when they come. <laughs> yes, yes. 
Okay, so here's an example of an award letter from Lehigh. So if we look on the left, this is the award letter. Over here is the portal. We can talk about that in a minute. So if we look on here, what we're seeing is Lehigh is a semester school. So it's very common that they'll break it into quarters or semesters, depending on how the university is set up. So if we look here, they've labeled it. So that's good. Gift aid. So this is that free money that Joe and I are talking about. So basically what they gave them was 1665 times two. That's the free money. The rest of the award down here is a subsidized federal loan and an unsubsidized direct. It's direct federal loan. And you're going to see this on almost every award letter unless it's a school, which is usually the IVs that just don't give you loans. They're going to they're going to give it all out of their endowment. They can afford it, right? So don't feel badly for them. Um, you won't see loans, but the rest of the schools, you're always going to see this because it lowers the bottom line and it's not their money. So they're they're thrilled to give these out. And then you see the work study that we talked about. And then this one happens to have this Frank Williams loan. So it would be on you to get in the weeds on how does that loan work? I've seen these loans where they're interest-free, like they're nice loans that maybe an alum, maybe Frank Williams is, is a Lehigh alum who gave a big chunk of money to help kids, you know, with need, right? So that could be what that is. But I, but basically this is a little bit over 3000 bucks of gift aid from a price tag that's pretty big. You notice you don't even know what the price tag is because it's not on here, right? Which it technically, in my opinion, should be. So this is, this is a, not a typical award letter. I'll, I'll, I'll take a few minutes. I don't want to get too bogged down, but these direct student loans, I want to make sure you understand because I know there's a lot of confusion with parents around this. The only thing your child needs to do is submit the FAFSA and you are automatically eligible. There'll be some loan counseling. They'll e-sign a promissory note, but there's, there's that's it. Just get that FAFSA in. That's a big reason for for parents to do the FAFSA with your child. And there's caps that the government has put on it. This is debt of your kids. Only under their social security number, they're building a credit history, which is a positive. As long as they pay it off on time, it's a positive for their credit. Um, you're not on the hook. All the other loans out there, you're gonna be on the hook or grandma, somebody's gonna be co-signing, right? Um, and again, there's caps. So the most a, a student is going to be able to take out unless they're independent, which is not as common, is $27,000 over four years. So just realize that. You can see here the cap is $3,500 for a subsidized loan for freshman year. So that's why Lehigh awarded the full amount and then an extra $2,000 in unsubsidized, which they will do every year. Um, if the family has full need, they'll give the full subsidized and an extra $2,000. So that's what that is. Over here is, is a screenshot of Lehigh's portal. So you, you're seeing your parents, you're gonna get used to this portal because they're gonna be doing everything in the portal. They technically should be giving you third-party access because it's their portal. They're 18 and they're adults, right? And I do that because I thought it was comical with my kids that really they're adults and they have to give me permission to pay, but it is what it is and honestly, there are some parents that are not the greatest, right? So it is a protection for some, some kids, unfortunately. So follow the rules, get into the portal. And you can see here, this is a separate student. You're probably saying, well, this doesn't match over here. It's, it's not meant to, but this is what you'll see in the portal. This, the, the full unsubsidized loan was offered, which meant this family didn't have need to get the subsidized. And then there's a, there's a nice, nice big university grant. So different family, different financials. And then you accept or um, deny the loans and you can accept subsidized and not unsubsidized. So you do have a choice. And every year, if you submit that FAFSA, it'll show up. If it doesn't, you just ask for it. The unsubsidized should be offered every year. Anything you wanna add to that, Joe? Just a key, like as we as we go through a couple more of these, is with the the federal direct student loan again. Understand what is your financial, what what what's your cost for all four years? Do you need loans at all? Because the temptation oftentimes is to say, oh, well, we've got the you know the twenty five thousand and the five twenty nine. We'll just use that this year, and then we'll figure out loans later. Where a better strategy is to use those federal direct loans, particularly if they're subsidized, right? And then make sure that you know you're taking those because they're use it or lose it each year. 
right? Your 5,500 for your freshmen, 6,500 for sophomore, 7,500 for junior, 7,500 for senior. So just understand 27,000 total over four years. Once you're in your sophomore year, you can't go back and get that 5,500 bucks. Um, so we recommend you know, look at all four years, map out. Um, so it's just a, a important uh, point to make. So use it or lose it. Yeah, which, and that's, we'll show you real quick in the software at the end, we've got you covered on that too, about affordability and looking at it in a four-year window. Mm -hmm. um, you you, you want to know that you don't need those loans freshman year before you say no to them. Because I've had people call me junior year, my 59 is gone, what do I do? And they can't go back and get those the best loans out there because they didn't take them. So and you end up with private loans or whatever. So, and yeah. uh, there's a, a, well, Peggy is asking about clarify subsidized for unsubsidized. There's actually the award letter for uh, the New Jersey school uh, is, is great. So we'll illustrate that here in a second, Peggy. Okay. Um, so let's do Chicago first. We got some good questions. We'll answer them live, but let's get through these award letters. Um, Cause I, we do see your questions. I want to answer them uh, live when it, when it's appropriate. So let's get through these award letters. Okay, so here we've got, we're deliberately picking different things to show you guys. So here's University of Chicago. So this is a school that um, is very good at meeting need, right? So they're laying out all their awards up here and then they're actually describing them, which I don't see very often. I don't know if you've seen this a lot, Joe, but I don't see it very often on award letters. So more transparency, the better for families as far as I'm concerned. They're a quarter school. So you see now it's broken into three quarters. It's just the, the totals will match. It's just they're not a semester school. You've got two different grants a national recognition. And then you read here and see, and they've totaled. Okay, this is that free money we keep. This is the total gift aid. So that's a, that's a nice chunk of change. Then we yep. come down here, unlike Lehigh, they're actually telling you what the cost is, the direct costs, right? It's still not an A plus in my book because there's indirect costs. And those are books, room, um, books, travel, and then they have, the, sometimes they'll have another line item, personal, personal expenses, whatever that is, shampoo, I don't know what they're putting in there. <laughs> but, um, and travel is where you could have some wiggle room because if the school isn't far away and you're jumping in a car and travel is 4,000 a year, and it might not be for your family. But you Chicago here is totaling their direct costs, right? So then you can do the math, estimated direct costs after scholarships and grants. So they're telling you, okay, well, this is the price tag you've still got left, you still have left to cover, about 36, six. So here's your free stuff. Minus, minus our costs, and there you go. So more data than you saw on Lehigh, but still not complete, okay? So now- so a, couple, a couple of things on that one, if you can go back real quick, is just that there was a question that came in, how do you know if it's one year or four year? So teaser scholarships are a real thing. So the way that they've listed these out, do be very cautious to make sure some schools will still slip in $2,000 and it's freshman only. So if they're giving awards, even with need-based aid, you want to say, are these renewable for four years? Um, so, and, and ensure that they are, because need-based aid can change from year to year, but a lot of times schools will ass can assure you that, yes, you're going to get a, a package like this for each year. Um, so it's a very important question. I, I appreciate the question came in. So, and then the other thing I was going to point out on here um, is um, there's a question about if, if acceptance rates are five to 20%, you know, the, the really high-end schools, um, these oftentimes, these 5% admit and lower, these are the schools that don't offer scholarships. They've basically said kind of not just that they don't need to, um, but they've also said, if you have need, we're going to meet 100%. They have endowments, but they say we don't want any money to be a barrier. Um, so that's that's kind of an important piece um, to understand. And then on this U Chicago thing, here's what I want to encourage you to think about. Don't get romanticized by, oh, they gave us $43,000. Right, because I'm more concerned with: Do you have the thirty-seven thousand dollars per year it's going to take to pay for this? I don't care what they gave us; I care what we have and what you know what their remaining cost is. So don't get, don't take the bait. You know, we see a lot of people they get the man, we got a twenty-five thousand dollars scholarship. I'm like, yeah, but it's still fifty-five thousand dollars to go there. Um, so you know, just be cautious because it is it is alluring. You know, this is this is a great package, but can we actually make the the, the cost work? So. All right, that's it. Okay. All right. So now let's look at um, NJIT. Okay. So 
it's a little bit busy. So we've broken this down a little bit. So let's start over here. So again, you're gonna, you guys are starting to get used to this here. We've got the direct costs, okay? Estimated direct costs, tuition and fees and room and board, the 32-2. Then they lay out the need-based grant. So now you see this family's Pell eligible, which is a federal grant. And then they're also receiving state grants and then another thousand from another source. So total grants, about 19,000 total. And then they total grants and scholarships. So we don't see any merit aid here, right? But when in doubt on any of these, because as I said earlier, Sometimes they flip-flop between the term grants and scholarships. You have to know for sure if it's merit or if it's grants. Why? Because as Joe just said, need-based can change. If you get a promotion, you could lose need-based aid, but merit almost always is guaranteed for four years. And per the question earlier, just if you don't see that in writing, just make sure with the college that it is. So, so now we're down to this. So then they tell you, okay, total direct cost, this is what we're giving you. And the circles is what we've popped in. This is what you really want to know. Okay, so now this is what's out of pocket, right? The 13,000 in, in direct net cost. Not done yet. Now we've got indirect costs. So they actually spell these out, which is great. And as I told you, we got some line items here. If you're coming to NJIT from California, 1100 might not be enough, right? So keep that in mind that this is their guesstimate of, of other educational expenses and, and transportation and books. I'll tell you right now, my kids never spent $3,000 on books, right? It's a different world. You don't go to the bookstore and spend $400 on a new book, right? You're, they're borrowing, you're getting it from Amazon and selling it back and all that fun stuff. So total direct costs about 7,200. So then we come down here and when we do the math, they do the same math here. Basically, this is your total estimated cost of attendance that we have in the red circle, okay? And then your total net cost, like as Joe keeps emphasizing, that's what matters. What's your total net cost? And then let's look at this over four years. That's your next step once you've, you're done analyzing all these award letters and comparing them. Then over here, they go into the detail about subsidized versus unsubsidized. So let's touch Peggy's question now. So what's the difference between subsidized and unsubsidized? Basically subsidized is the government is covering that interest until six months after the student graduates. You have to have financial need. If you don't, it'll all be unsubsidized. Or you might even see 2,500 of a subsidized loan and 3,000, because it can total 5,500 of unsubsidized. By the federal mandates, they, they can't give the subsidize unless there's that much of need left in the equation, okay? But this family, this is the typical way it's done. You've got the max of subsidized because there was the need and another 2,000. And again, your choice to accept one or both of these. You don't have to as a family. Yep. You don't have to accept all of it. You know, you could say we need 2,000 bucks. Yeah. So we're going to take that from the subsidized and that's all we need. You know, I had a conversation and I don't think I missed on this webinar, but you know, friend says, you know, we've got student loans. I just took them out every year because why not? And like, well, she said, and I woke up $27,000 student loans and I use that money for spring breaks and buying clothes and tapes. Yeah, you know, remember when tapes were a thing? Um, so you know, like you're you don't dating have to, yourself. For yeah. that <laughs> I'm dating her, not me. Uh, but I do remember tapes. Yeah, yeah. My my first tape was Run DMC, and I'm proud of that. So, <laughs> uh, so just but we'll put it in there. Yeah. Th so those student loans, nineteen thousand is the max of subsidized uh, that you can get over the four years. Twenty seven is the max over four years combined. So uh, to twenty seven is the max. So again, hopefully that helps clarify what those are, and then. That smart lending strategy, understand these are the best loans you can get. They're forgivable. Right now, there's a moratorium, so you don't have to pay interest because of uh, the SECURE Act, I think is what it was part of. But you know, these are the types of loans, the federal loans that you're going to want uh, if, if you need loans at all. So, Yeah, it's the first place you're going to want to start. Somebody put in and said, why would one not accept subsidized? <laughs> I agree with you, right? <laughs> Even if you have the money, take yeah. the float, right? And go ahead and invest it and know when your kid graduates, you just pay pay it off, nineteen thousand. They're building a nice credit report. Which, when your child gets out and wants to sign a lease with a bunch of their buddies, if they have no credit, you're going to be co-signing that lease. That's um, I made sure that you know my kids had developed credit, so that's that's a good thing. 
Um, and he, he said, and only accept unsubsidized. So yeah. either way, yeah, it's, it's a choice. And to me, subsidized is a little bit of a no brainer, right? Just keep in mind, your child has signed up for debt. So keep that, make sure that's on your docket that it, it does have to be paid off. Yeah, yeah. So a couple of questions came in that the, the, the student loans. So there, there is a new provision that allows you to use 529s for up to $10,000 of student loan repayment. So if you were to you know, use these student loans and then one time you can do up to $10,000 per uh, beneficiary. Um, so, you know, there is a that's a new provision. So, so you know, as you're thinking long term, uh, getting your arms around, you know, kind of that question of why wouldn't we take unsubsidized? I certainly would uh, and, and keep it in there. Um, and then the other question was, um, what about if it takes five years? There's a you can have an additional four thousand dollars for a super senior, uh, the fifth year. So um, the additional four thousand dollars for a senior. Typically, it's hopefully just a semester. Um, so, but thirty one thousand is the max over the four uh, or over five. I'm sorry uh, for undergrad. So that answers that. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. That's what my daughter's college called them, super seniors. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly yeah. what they called them. Yeah. So yes, somebody wrote in. You're you're going to be getting a recording. Somebody has to drop off early. No problem. You are going to be getting a recording um, tomorrow. So you're yep. good. Okay. All right. Let's keep moving here so we can get through this. Okay. So how do we know that we've received a fair award? you have to understand that college and how they function, right? You need to know the cost of attendance and this is not gonna be on all these awards, right? So if you get one that just says, hey, this is what you're given, here's some grants or scholarships and loans and there's no other information on there, that's where it's on you to know this information so you can actually do this. And if you go into our MyCap software, you're going to see costs of attendance, right, that are updated annually. And you, you're going to have estimates of your EFC. And when I go over my example of a family I help with need-based aid, that's what I did. I used the tool, I analyzed the award, and then they reached out and, and actually got more money. So you want to know where they're at. You can ask them, what is my EFC? How did you calculate that? Because certain schools, it's not transparent. We don't have an example here, but I have award letters where the school just puts it on there. I love that. They say, here's your EFC. You know, maybe we'll update our deck so we can show a perfect award. Um, but most of them do not do that. And I, I don't know that it's an oversight that it's not transparent, right? So you get to dig in on that so that you understand the need. Do we have need? And if you've done your homework, which now you guys are all in this webinar, you're all gonna do your homework, right? You're gonna know where you fit. So when you get an award, you're gonna say, this doesn't jive with what I thought. Then you start digging, basically. Yep. Yeah, so there's a question on like EFC, like we started off the top, but expected family contribution, that's what the college thinks you can afford next year for college. One year. Yeah. Yep. So it's one year. You fill out these forms to get financial aid each year. Your freshman year is the most important year. Uh, you want to look as poor as possible for the first time in your life. Um, just keep that in the back of your head. So, you know, when you're applying, it's each year. They're going to look at the what's the cost? What do they think you can afford? That's your eligibility for need based financial aid. Um, so, you know, there's a question kind of on free money. Uh, Need-based means yes, if they only award on need and they don't have any scholarships, we'll show you some profiles in the system. But yeah, that means they don't have any scholarships, they only offer need-based aid uh, at schools. So that's a very important piece to understand proactively instead of reactively. Yeah. You know, we, get the, we get it every year, right, where we've got the financial aid award letter in hand and you go, gosh, I didn't know, you know, Yale wasn't going to give me any scholarships. I'm like, well, I could have told you that, I could have saved you the headache and heartache. I know they're full pay if you don't qualify for need, right? So these are the kind of things, again, if we plan for the future, right, we don't want to account for the past, right? So that's what we're trying to break through here is do these things proactive instead of reactive. And then we'll get into how to get more money once you're at the finish line. <laughs> yeah, and that's really what we're trying to, yeah. And just because the school meets 100% of need, it doesn't mean that they don't have merit. In general, that's the case. But there are schools like Occidental, California, no. They need 100% of need. Again, that information we make available to you. you it, it is available, right? You just got to do the digging. So, but if you were making a generalization, that's typical. 100% need, usually there's not a lot of merit. Yep. Um, all right. So now our, let's. Our profile will show you. <laughs> our profile will show you. Yeah. Yep. So. All right. So let's, let's, let's talk about appealing. That's what you guys are here for. So what, 
what is a good candidate for appealing? Typically, private schools, you're going to have more success than state public colleges, unless you have a change. So we're in this world of COVID where people have been negatively affected, right? Or you could be divorced now or separated, whereas for seniors, you're reporting on the 2020 tax year. If your world, your finances are different, that is 100% reason to be appealing. It's a very justified appeal. Um, and if it's a state school or not, then definitely. If you have a change in circumstance or in 2020 or your base year, whatever it is for your, your child that you're on here for, if something happened, if you had to take a hardship distribution out of your 401k, anything like that, this is the time where you want to be transparent with the colleges and open, honest and open, right? Because you want to try and get more money if your situation is different. And, and they, they have staff to do this, right? They're not going to rescind admission. They, they, they're expecting this. So private college better than state. Again, I, I touched on the next bullet. COVID has been huge. So definitely reach out. I had a mom who had a salon and she's like, they gave me so much money. I can't reach out. I'm like, yes, you can, because they don't even know about the salon and they gave you money. You absolutely should, right? She thought she was being greedy, right? Um, if you, like I mentioned, I, I, I mentioned all these retirement distribution. If you are divorced or separated, there's a lot of planning that goes on there. So that could be a very valid reason if you're a business owner. Some of these schools, and if you are a business owner and you have a senior, you know they asked about your business. They asked for your business returns. If you're an S Corp or a partnership or a C Corp, they're getting in the weeds on that. So that might be something to reach out about because they might be picking and choosing your expenses that they're allowing. Um, and if you have competing offers, and Joe referenced this earlier, that's why having, I love all these parents that don't have seniors and have younger kids, because now you're going to learn about this. And if you build a college list strategically saying, hey, you know, maybe Johnny's not going to go to that school, but we know that there's going to be a nice package and that school competes with another school that he loves, might make sense to throw it on the list. It's common app school. You're going to pay 60 bucks to apply maybe. But it might end up, you might end up getting thousands of dollars more if you appeal. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, you know, I, saying, hey, I've got some property, you know, I, oh, I have these rentals and that's going to be my retirement nest egg. That doesn't work. The colleges don't really care if and when you retire. That's something you've got to own, right? So certain, certain strategies, people, you know, oh, well, that million dollars, that's for my retirement. If it's not in a retirement account, there it's fair game. So just just keep in mind that those sort of appeals are going to fall on deaf ears, basically. Yeah, man, Peg, there are so many good questions coming in. I'm just going, gosh, we get yeah. to sit on here forever. Yeah, try to put them in the Q and A, guys, because otherwise Joe and I have to flip back and forth, and then other people can see them. Or I just just for consistency, just pop them in the Q and A. Yeah, we'll try and get some going, and we'll stay on if we can answer it later. And this 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 idea of the special circumstance. I'll give you a, a real example of one and Peg's gonna go through a very detailed one, but I had a client, uh, a family we worked with that was, um, he was let go, but he got a significant severance package, $90,000. Um, so that showed up as income, right? So, but what the story didn't tell was he had been out of work for 11 months. So going back, they basically, we worked with the school. We did a special circumstance appeal to say, look, this was a one-time event can you eliminate that from the equation? And they did, right? So that equation, that saved the family about, that that increased their ESC about $40,000. Um, so, you know, by having that conversation, the school wants to give you a good award, and but they have a process for it. You're going to need what's called a tax transcript. Um, so don't be fearful, you know, present your case. Worst thing they do is say, we can't help. Um, so, you know, with all of these things. So there's just um, don't be intimidated by it. The schools are expecting it, like we talked about, like especially small privates. Um, and the one thing I was going to say is um, when you look at the need-based aid and the percentage of need they meet, out-of-state state schools, they may represent that they meet 80% of need. Oftentimes that's in, in the form of loans. If you're an out-of-state student coming to that school, they're not going to meet your need other than if you're Pell eligible for Pell grants from the federal government, they're not gonna dip into their institutional grants for out-of-state kids. So the averages that are reported, they're not uh, the inaccurate, but they can be misleading. 
So just be knowledgeable of that because, you know, if you're looking at UC Boulder and they say they meet 80% of, of need, you know, if you're from Pennsylvania, you're going to get zero. So, you know, just understand that. So, um, and that's actually built into our logic in our tool because between all of us at College Aid Pro, I mean, we have, I don't know, 50, 60 years of experience with all of us in this. So, what we know the colleges do is built into there. It's not a glorified spreadsheet that just crunches numbers like you could do. Let me grab because three people asked the same question. So, I'm going to hit this one live because it's obviously on your mind. So, you're asking about IM versus FM. FM stands for the federal methodology, which is the FAFSA only schools, which is the lion's share of them. That's the EFC they use. There's a group of schools that require the CSS profile and that's the institutional. We don't have time to get in the weeds on this, but please get into my cap. We're gonna give you a link. Mark's gonna send out an email tomorrow with a discount code, get in there. We have support. We have live office hours I do every other week. We have webinars. You will, you will know all of this upside down, upside down, inside out, right? Um, these are great questions. So that's what that is. That might not totally answer your question, but um, just in the interest of moving on, um, hopefully, hopefully that, that helps some. Um, and if we have twins, is that good for an appeal? Again, this, it's a great question. It's a little loaded and there's a lot here, but if you have twins, your EFC for the next two years for the federal methodology will go down about 50%. That's going to change with the 24, 25 school year. Again, we are doing education around these changes. So get into our community and you can hop on these webinars. So just keep that in mind. Um, the person that asked that question if you have sophomores, it might not help you, but at certain schools, it will, because certain schools might still reduce your EFC. Um, Stay tuned. Uh, right. so, yeah, we don't have time to unpack it today, but you know, just yeah. like that, if you've got 24, Easy. 25, there's significant changes, the, the whole FAFSA. That are coming up, yeah. So yeah. let's, um, we, we'll keep trying to grab these, but I want to make sure that we get to our examples so that you guys kind of get the learning through examples here. So what's the best way to appeal? Just like most things in life, there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. When you're approaching these colleges, first of all, it's not, you notice the term negotiate is not in here anywhere, right? You're not buying a car and you don't want to approach the colleges that way. You want to bring when the first number one, bring color and background. You want your, you want them, these these colleges are looking at yield, right? They're giving out all these acceptances. They want, they want a certain percent. They're projecting at different times between now and May 1st, so many yeses in deposit checks, right? So they want to feel like if they give you that extra money you're asking for, that you're going to come. So bring some color, bring a story. Also have your child lead the charge. I typically have people have their child email if that's the school's process. You got to find out what their process is. And then you attach a letter that explains maybe a little bit more nuts and bolts around the situation, but you want your child involved because if the child's not involved, the college could think, well, this is just, you know, the parents doing this to 10 different schools to see where they can get the best bottom line. And they might not, they might not do it. You also want to have a specific ask. And this is where it gets a little tricky and you might need some guidance, right? And we can be there to support you if you book a meeting. Because how you want to, you don't want to over ask, but you want to ask because the college wants to know where your head's at, and if you ask correctly, you'll probably get it, or maybe you'll get a little less. But if you get three thousand bucks, it's good for four years. That's a twelve thousand dollar discount, right? Which everybody would love. You can also show them competing awards, which we've mentioned a couple times, right? And you can challenge expenses. You can challenge expenses. You can say, hey, certain things were on my tax return that you should pull out. Or, hey, how did you look at my business? And why did you take that out? And home equity is a really big one for schools that look at home equity. How did you value my business? I mean, my, my home, um, homes, you know, real estate's going nuts in a lot of parts of the country. That's a talking point with these colleges. And then the other piece is, you know, be persistent, not annoying, but persistent. Definitely follow up because they are going to be really busy with this. Find out what their process is, follow it, and then follow up with them. Ask them, when should I expect to hear back? How will I hear back? And, and we always tell um, parents, 
kids, you know, email is kind of like using Morse code, right? Tell them they have to check their email, right? Because if the colleges are communicating that way, you could miss some really important communication if they're not checking emails and forwarding to them to you and staying on the same page. Yep. Okay. Oh, okay. So now we are ready to jump into, Joe, you want to take yours first and I will uh, jump into the Q&A here. Yeah, and I don't know if we want to do the my cap, but um, yeah. So oh, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, th there's a ton of good questions. Um, I'm going to show you talk through a case uh, specific on um, competitive appeal, um, and I just want to mention, like in the appendix, there's a bunch of sample language that we've that we've been happy to provide um, that's worked. Um, so um, I'll, I'll talk through my case, and I'll show you like I have a we have an advisor workstation that just it, it's the same information that you're gonna see in your MyCap account, but it's just, a, I've organized it a little differently, but um, we have a, a really talented student uh, that's headed off to, that was headed off to college last year, um, oh, nearly perfect ACT, um, great, you know, a valedictorian. So a lot of schools want this student, uh, interested in communications. Um, so we applied to some of the best communication schools in the country. So we also applied to some schools that they had no interest in going to, because uh, we thought that, that these schools historically give really good financial, financial aid, uh, or I'm sorry, scholarship money regardless of financial aid. So in this particular case, the, the money wasn't really the, the object. It was just, um, they didn't, they wanted to get as much out of the system as possible. And they have a great student to, to, to pose their case. Um, let me just make sure I have this teed up. So, um, so the first case, here's, here's our initial offers. So here's the way we look at things inside of our systems. We say, oh, here's the university. Um, we're going to provide snapshots of each of the universities. Here's what it takes to get in. Here's their average ACT. We had a 35 ACT. We know that this is their middle 50%. So we're going, gosh, we're, do they do they do need-based? Do they do merit? Well, here's their business model. They use institutional. Here's the cost. Here's how it breaks out. Need met, not great, 59%. So if you're a need-based candidate, this school, uh, maybe not great, but, uh, the, but a lot of students, if you're not need-based, they, they do a great job of scholarships. 31% of kids on average 7,000. So we're going, man, this must be a school. Um, and here's every scholarship available uh, from that school. And these are all in the system for every school in the country. And we're going to give you an out predictive outcome of what that might look like. So we were kind of shocked when we got to this, to Elon, and they didn't provide us uh, any scholarships, right? So here we got a zero here, but we did get scholarships from these other three great schools. And Syracuse also skunked us. Um, so, you know, we come in here, we're going, well, what's going on here? These institutional, you know, most kids get scholarships here. And on average, it's close to 12 grand. Um, so why did we not get anything um, when we thought we'd probably get at least the average? So what we did was we provided color. We said, you know, the schools, by the way, they track everything. I think we talked about this a little bit already, but they track how many times you've been on campus. Do you follow them on Facebook? What did you eat when you were on campus? Who did you talk to? It's a marketing machine. So understand they are tracking these things. So demonstrating interest, finding your advocate internally is important. So if you're working with an admissions person that you've really developed a relationship with, that's you know, your regional person, um, very common that they're going to visit the high school. Um, and when you visit, you connect with them, bring those people into the fold. Right. And then bring color to your to what you're doing. And then, you know, the actual appeals. So we had these other great schools that gave us nice money. So we basically said Elon and Syracuse are our top choices. But, you know, this is the language and we'll send this out. But like essentially um, this family actually met with the dean. Um, so they actually had uh, a, a month before they got their letter. So they called them and said, hey, you know, here, unfortunately, I was not awarded any scholarship initially. We, uh, we found we have much generous, more, more generous offers from RIT, Marist and Emerson. So, you know, I would prefer Elon, if there's any way you can increase my award by at least $8,000, that'd make it more affordable for us. Very specific, action oriented, you know, thank you for being willing to consider it. Um, and then we also had the parent actually sent something to the dean. So, you know, this is, this is a competitive student. So lo and behold, um, all told, they came out with a $5,500 scholarship, a $4,500 scholarship, and another $1,000 grant that was renewable for four years as well. So that's $11,000 now that we have to use towards school that's going to reduce our cost of school, right? So if we go in here, we put in $11,000, you know, now we have a competitive offer relative to these other schools, right? Because we provided them with the letters. Syracuse is a very similar situation. Um, I won't show the actual letter, but we actually asked them for an additional $15,000, um, which we didn't think was crazy because they have scholarships for that amount. 
Um, and they did come back with an additional 5,000. So again, we put our costs. So now we have, here's our schools on a side-by-side -side basis. Now we can make an informed decision, but this is just one year. Peg's gonna show you the affordability profiles because you really got to look at this in terms of um, a four-year event because if we look at this school, um, if, if you had a budget in here of $150,000, $37,500 per year, what our system is going to try and show you is what does the finish line look like? If you go here, here's your net cost over four years versus your budget. Here's your loan. Here's your loan payment, right? All of our systems operate the same way. So you're going to say, you know, what's it going to cost us out of pocket? What's, what's our budget? What's our delta? That's the finish line. That is the finish line. So hopefully that's helpful. You know, competitive appeal. You got to have the other offers. They, they really do work. Um, and you got to make your case. Um, so uh, Peg, I'll flip it to you and you can kind of run through uh, the other side of the fence. So, yeah, so let me show you. So mine was a need-based appeal. So basically this was a family that I worked with for their older daughter. So they knew how to navigate it with their son, <clears throat> kind of. Their son applied early decision, got into a school and they didn't like the award. They had done their homework. So they're like, Peg, we don't think this is a good award. Can we get your help? So basically I'll show you, I'll show you the award. This was from a school, Santa Clara in California, a private school. So now that you guys are used to looking at awards, you can see very quickly, this school gave a little shy of 10,000 of the free money. And they're very clear. This is a need-based grant, no, no debate, no merit scholarship. This student applied, as I said, early decision. So that's the earliest deadline for admission. It's binding unless you can't afford it. Um, this student got in because he was ED. So he didn't get married. He, he wasn't in that middle 50%. And so he's a little low. And I'll show you where, where you can see that in my cap in a minute. Um, work study. And then as, as we've talked about the subsidized and unsubsidized loan. So the first thing I thought about was, were there any errors on the financial aid forms? And there were not. That's another thing that we do guide parents through. And we've got line by lines that are part of our, our software in an area called the Academy. Um, because if you make a mistake there, that's not to your benefit, that's going to be a pain point throughout this whole process. Then, then I said to them, is anything different? Because there was a question, um, what tax year are we looking at? It's it, your, your base year that Joe mentioned at the beginning is a two-year look back. So the easiest way that I tell people to remember it, when is your child going to school? So if you have a senior, they're going this fall, 2022, just subtract two from that year. And that's the tax year that you're going to be reporting on. So seniors reported on 2020, give a junior, it's going to be all about 2021. That year's gone, right? You can't do anything. Sophomore year, you are in that base year, right? So that's what you're reporting on. It doesn't mean that you can't appeal and say it's different, but that's the year that you're required to report on. So here's the award. So I went into our software. I said, all right, I'm going to do some number crunching to see if this is a decent award. So I don't have Santa Clara up here, but what I did is I went here and I said, all right, let me look at this school. And this is the information we have on all these schools. And I said, okay, so on average, which Joe talked about, on average, and this school's 99, 100% Case Western, right? Most schools don't do that. Santa Clara, it was 76%. So I crunched the numbers, 76% on average, how much of that is free money. And so I crunched it and I was like, they're, they're pretty low. They're, they're really giving this kid not a great package, right? So I knew there was some wiggle room and I wanted to get a gut check. So we called, they made an appointment with one of the financial aid administrators, the three of us jumped on a call with her. I got a gut check of where they were at and then I counseled them. And what I told them was, hey, just what I told you guys earlier, have your son write an email, right? Short but sweet, doesn't have to be a novel, right? Have some emotion in there. I'm really excited to be a Bronco. The first time I went on campus, blah, blah, blah. Something that just like, I, he's ED, right? So if they, if they meet this demand, they know he's going to come, right? So they did that. Then they, then the parents attached the PDF and I always recommend it to be a PDF. So it can't be, you know, changed by accident, you know, and they got a little bit more in the weeds and they decided what they wanted to share. And I looked at it and edited it a little, the key things they shared their, they both work, but they shared their professions 
they're, they are attorneys, but they're nonprofit legal aid. And down here where I have my um, cursor, they, they made an ask, right? They asked for 10,000 more. That wasn't getting all the way up to middle 50% because he wasn't a middle 50% kid, right? They sent this in and they came back and said, you got it and you get it every year. So that's a $40,000 savings to this family. They were thrilled. Of course they were thrilled, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go back into my cap because people always say, well, how do I know what to do? How do I know what to ask? How do I know where he fell in the middle 50%? Well, I'm in these schools. You've got this data right here in my cap. So as you're building this list, you can build a list that has safety, mid, and stretch schools, and you can strategically pick schools like Joe and I mentioned about around this, right? Strategize, do things. You know what the end game is. So do things now proactively to get you where you want, okay? So you've got that data. You've got that data at your fingertips. And then as we keep saying, four-year, four-year, you want to look here, affordability. Look at this in a four-year window. What's the net cost? And this example, there's no college pre-approval. And this is Joe's baby, right? He came up with this, and I think it's brilliant. Similar to mortgage pre-approval, how much can you afford? And it might sound a little silly, like, well, duh, parents don't think about that. Like, you're going to campuses, and you could be at a Maserati campus, and you don't know it, right? So do your homework project these net costs, then bring in what are the discounts you're maximizing from the endowment? What can you afford? And then what are those gaps? And I, I created this full disclosure this morning because I'm doing a webinar tomorrow that's got a little bit different deal. So I didn't have any college pre-approval, but say there was 200,000 in here, the family could afford 50 or 25 a year, that would be down to 195, right? I have through the years, when parents see these funding gaps, even if you don't like them, it's data and, you, and, and they feel better because they're like, wow, this is what I needed to see. This is what I needed to understand. And then as we've been talking about loans, it's going to project out because kids will say, well, I can do that. I'll do 60,000 of loans. That's fine. Right. They don't know what that means. So we provide, hey, this is a 10 year monthly payment. 25 year monthly payment. And hey, you want to be in engineering? We're projecting what you might make that month per month. Let's look at that. Let's have a conversation. Start educating your kids around that, right? If we, with the seniors that are on here, not if, because I know you're on here, definitely get in here and look at this, upload your awards, right? Upload your awards. We can verify them, plug them in. And we're going to have uh, something called how to pay here that's going to go live this month toward the end of this month, where you're going to be able to look at this and really analyze the different awards. So definitely take advantage of this resource. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I'll show I'll show one just uh, piece inside of the the my cap. Just a, it's a different family, right? But just understanding like um, a couple of the key pieces, like we've got an academy in here. We've oh yeah, thank you, Joe. About that. Um, so there were some questions around, you know, how do we line by? What about the FAFSA, et cetera? You know, we've got, you know, in here line by line FAFSA information. So get what you can from our um, all the different resources, line by line stuff. We host biweekly roundtables for members, uh, and you know, these office hours with Peg and uh, yeah, Matt every Carpenter other week I'm I'm on there answering questions for people. Yep. Um, and then you know the community is is a it's a forum for parents and we moderate. So if you've got questions, like we've had a lot of great questions today, we we host those, we moderate those inside of our community because uh, we want people to have an informed college buying decision. Um, you know, all the way down to we've talked scholarships, how to get more. We had some questions on private scholarships, so I just wanted to show like we have a private scholarship search built right into my cap. Um, so you know, and then. For like premium users, like we talked about, here's the schools and the affordability profiles versus your budget. This is an opportunity in financial literacy to really help proactively. The time to have these conversations hopefully is sooner, right? That we've got the senior now, so you've got to compare and negotiate, but hopefully we're having these conversations sooner. Um, and then shopping for schools, uh, part of our premium is this ability to use an advanced search function. Like every time we show this to people, they say, gosh, I didn't know a service like this existed because you can now shop for college like you'd shop for an airline ticket on Orbitz or Travelocity. 
what's important to you? You know, I want a school within 500 miles. I want to make sure it's a, 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 a small school. That's what I'm interested in. I'm only interested in four-year schools. Um, I want to make sure they have my communication major. Um, and can you show me schools uh, that meet all those criteria and also make sure that they're Forbes ranked? Um, and then you can search for schools and then you can pull up this list and then you can say, okay, can you just show me the schools? This is financially, can you just show me in order like which ones are going to give me the most scholarship money? Here's your schools that you might want to be considering that meet all of your criteria. These are fantastic schools, by the way. So, you know, that's the power of CAP. That's part of the premium feature. But I wanted to show that um, because I think when we're going through these things, you've got your list of schools in mind, understand what you have, but then what are what's out there that you don't even know about? Uh, so that's kind of what the advanced search is all about. Yeah, and we'll be providing um, a, a discount code that yeah. you can use if you decide you wanna upgrade. If you click on the little upgrade button up there, Joe, um, if you go in under the free version, you, up, you, you onboard yourself, then you can come in here and decide where you want to go, right? If you if you think you're going to need help, sign up for the valedictorian because you're basically going to get the full um, upgrade of the platform for free. It's a one-time offer. Just sign up. You don't have to sign up for the meeting within a week, right? If you if you want to play around in my cap and get everything dialed in, which I would recommend, um, make the most out of the hour. But sign 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 up for that. Sign up for the one on the far right. We're here to support you and get you get you dialed in. If you have a sophomore, it is not too early. Get get knowledgeable now. You will you will sleep like a baby. Trust me. I've been through this. It'll be much much easier if yeah. you do that. So there's still a lot of questions coming in. What I would say because we're a couple minutes over and I actually have to run to a meeting. <laughs> um, guys, join the software. Let me see. Did um great, Mark put in da, 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 da. um i don't know if mark put in the link yeah mark put yeah mark put in the link um and you will get it tomorrow too so don't worry you'll you'll get it in your email um what is this see the advisor version yeah somebody put in something about the advisor version I don't know what that, maybe I can't tell who put that in there. We have an advisor version. Don't get confused. If you're a financial advisor, then reach out to us because okay. if you, that that's, that's another um, offering that we have. If you're a parent and a financial advisor and you're not sure what, reach out to us on that. If you're a parent, please, yeah, please use the link that Mark put in the chat at 1051 that's your link and it'll be in the email because if you get into the it's it'll it'll get very confusing and convoluted and that's not where you want to be if you're a parent okay so all this information will be coming if you're confused just wait for the email tomorrow and sign up otherwise you can click on the link that mark put in there and that'll open in a new tab and you can jump in there and you'll be good to go yeah, yeah anything cool. else just and my last parting words are you'll make it take a lot of deep breaths and enjoy your kids. It, before you know it, it's gonna be August or September. You're gonna be driving away. They're gonna be waving at the dorm. When I say this, sometimes I get choked up, right? Cause I still <laughs> remember with my kids, right? So try and enjoy it and just, you know, take a lot of deep breaths because they're teenagers and because this process can be a little crazy, so. Yep. And there are normal families paying for college every day and not getting over their heads with student loans. Uh, and we hope we can assist with that with our solutions. So thanks, everybody. Uh, wish we could stay on, but I think we both got to jump. Um, and uh, Mark, thanks for having us. And the team at Saving for College, really appreciate the opportunity and look forward to connecting with people, uh, however that may look in the future. So thanks, everybody. All right. Stay well. Take care.